Hello and good evening. N5BSB here. And this is the first video. I'm putting together another HF box. I had one before that had a um, Yezu FT857 in it. Fully self-contained, similar to this one. And... I uh, had a guy wanted to buy it. I sold it. Uh, had a lot of stuff going on the second half of last year. Um, and with the deaths in the family and everything else. So anyway, on this one, I've decided to just make it strictly HF instead of VHF, UHF. I had a lot of people asking me before how I built it, what all was involved in it, everything else. Uh, so I'm going to do my very best to try to document this build and try to put together a parts list. And uh, the first thing I got to say about any time you're going to build a box like this, if you're going to make it functional and self-contained where you can just grab it and go and activate and that's my that's my goal with this these type of boxes is i want it to be everything connected all i have to do is flip a switch and everything comes on uh i have uh, all my digital mode stuff i have everything to do ft8 or whatever i want to do Everything is here, and probably even, you know, one of my real potable and antennas will fit down in here. So all you have to do is go out, uh, set your antenna up, uh, use a 50-foot piece of coax, put your antenna up, turn it on, and operate. That's my goal. I don't want to have to, you know, take stuff out of the box, set it up, hook cables, connectors, and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to do that. <clears throat> so, as I found out from the last box, sometimes you get in too big a hurry, and you make little mistakes, which it was not a big deal, but you learn. And one of them... Well, first let me talk about what all I'm going to put in here. Okay, so we got the Yezu 857. This one's brand new. Still got the plastic on the screen. The head uh, will be mounted uh, up here in this general area. I'm waiting on a bracket uh, for that. And this will be the power distribution box, which will be probably mounted somewhere in here. It's six uh, circuit with fuses in it. This is a... A USB hub. I think it's a four port USB 3.0. Uh, this cable will run down here to a um, a connector. This one right here is a USB 3.0 connector bulkhead pass through. I'm not a hundred percent sure exactly where this is going to go. I'm hoping it'll go somewhere right in this area right here because the, the, the tuner is going to sit right on top of the radio in this area so i'm hoping that there'll be room for this in here right beside the tuner um, one of the goals is to keep the data for your computer on the opposite side from your rf so um, these are two 16 amp hour uh, batteries uh, and there will be a harness that will connect these and then we'll come up here to the power distribution block. Um, the, there, this is the bulkhead fitting which will be back here kind of in this area. And then there is a 90 degree adapter that will go in here. And then I've got a one foot piece of coax that will make that connection. And it comes out just perfect. 
Uh, I have a digi rig uh, sound interface. It will be mounted up here uh, somewhere probably just below the display or somewhere and I'm not 100% sure on that yet. Um, I have here this is a combination function uh, this has a 65 watt USB-C, a QC 3.0 USB-A, and it has the voltage here in the middle, a little LCD. The reason why I like this one is it has an on-off button, so you can turn it off instead of having to worry about it being on all the time. Uh, okay, what else? I have a... Uh, I believe this is a 30 or a 35 amp uh, on and off uh, switch. Uh, if I need it, I have a 90 degree, depending on where uh, this, uh, sorry, depending on where this connector goes, I have a 90 degree that can run up to this uh, port here. Instead of using the f um, the very long cable that came with the radio, I just went ahead and purchased another one uh, that I can cut and wire to to fit. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, um, you know one of the things that I learned a little bit from my previous build uh, these boxes they get very warm now this radio has got two f two fans up here in the front and so it blows air this way the hot air will rise and come out of the box you're always going to have the lid open when you're operating so uh, there's some airflow in here but i don't think there's enough fresh air with the radio the radio is sitting all the way down on the bottom on its rubber feet which gives it about probably maybe an eighth to three sixteenths of uh, sitting off of the bottom. Um, but I have an idea. I still haven't decided which way I'm going to go with it. But I have some of these um, louvered vents. Uh, they are just a hair bit uh, wide I may have to trim them down a little bit but anyway um, I thought about putting two of these sorry my lights no good over here um, let me see if I can and I've got two different styles I haven't decided but uh, one of them would be to do it do two of them side by side um, and this would give air directly. The other option would be to put three of these, uh, smaller, you know, put three of them because the, the fans are, are literally right, right there. So having fresh air come in the side and the fans blow it through the radio and then come out and exit that away would would be uh, the best way the other thing I've got is this uh, cable right here which is a microphone um, extension cable all it is is an RJ you know 45 adapter this one is made so that you can mount it if you want to and uh, where this is handy is you can plug this in down there where the microphone is currently plugged in and then you can either mount this somewhere whether you want to mount it on the front or just leave it laying in there it doesn't matter either either way um, when you want to change microphones let's say you go and do field day you want to use a desk mic instead of a hand mic uh, you can really easily just unplug it here plug your microphone in it makes it so much easier. Uh, let me see if there's anything else I'm thinking about that I'm missing. 
Obviously, I have a cable for the cat, you know, a USB-A to USB, uh, a good quality um, a cable. I have some stuff for, uh, you know, for ground. This is a, a ground wire. Uh, and I have this little one, which I've used in the past. This one is a little ground, like can go on either the radio or the tuner. And the switch, um, I think the switch is going to be mounted over here on the side. Uh, this battery, um, this one here will be mounted up in the front right here. It's going to be mounted like right down in, in this area right here. Uh, so if you want to charge your phone or something like that, you can get access to it really easy. There's one thing to be careful about. When you put stuff on these cases in the front, you see I drew that black line right there. That's where the latch, that's where this latch, you know, hits. So if you get it, if you, if you get anything up too high here your latch is not going to close so make sure you put it down far enough to where your latch will still close um, and then I, the other the other two items that I'm waiting on that haven't come in aside from the bracket to mount the head uh, is uh, my power pole I've got a single and a dual power pole and they're going to be mounted on this side over here there will be a, a dual port and then a single port and the single port will be strictly for charging the batteries they will be a direct connection and then the everything else in here will be fused the uh, the tuner that will sit right here I use a ATU 130 Chinesium tuner they're great they're cheap and they will tune damn near anything uh, they'll tune 10 to 1 uh, they will handle uh, they're supposed to handle 160 watts I believe or 200 watts something like that uh, they will definitely handle um, 100 watts FT8 uh, definitely handle 100 watt sideband so I would say it's definitely a good 100 watt tuner and so that will fit it's about three and a half inches wide and about six inches long. So a little bit shorter than a radio, but it'll fit right here, you know, in this area. And I have a lot of wiring to do. Um, I will also have a GPS uh, plugged into this USB hub. So there'll be GPS, there'll be the, um, the digi rig uh, what else will be in here? Um, the radio, and I think that's I think I'll have one extra port on that. So, in the end, um, hopefully, if everything goes right, have a nice um, HF box. Uh, that you can just pick up and go. I also have a uh, have a tablet. Let's see if I can let's see if I can get my tablet up here. This is a commercial medical medical grade tablet, Windows 10. I like it because it can just sit right here in front, lean up against the uh, box, and it runs off a of 12 uh, volts. So I have a, a charging cable here with the Anderson power pole that can plug in you know right on the side and you can do all your all your digital modes and everything uh, with that uh, tablet uh, I also have a I don't even know where it's at at the moment I have a Bluetooth uh, mouse trackpad keypad as well so anyway this is the first video this is everything nothing's installed no holes have been cut 
uh, just starting from scratch. And I can't emphasize enough to try and try and try and mark and retry uh, before you start cutting and making mistakes. Because once you start cutting, that's it. And these boxes, this one I got from Harbor Freight and they had it on sale. I got it for $29. Um, I'll try to get a list of everything and what it costs. This one here, uh, this will actually be screwed in so that it's nice and stable. Uh, this uh, a USB hub, some good 3M heavy duty stick tape will hold that without any issues. Um, I'm not planning on putting in anything in here to hold the radio or the batteries down. Um, in, in my previous box, it really wasn't necessary. Uh, I will put something in here on the side of the radio on both sides just to prevent any type of, uh, scratching or marring. But other than that, everything fits in here pretty tight. The radio will not move. It's, it's on rubber feet. Uh, uh, yes, it could potentially when you flip the box over, but from my experience in the other one, by the time you put the tuner on here uh, and the tuner's got rubber feet, the tuner will be sticking up just a little bit higher than the batteries. And by, once you get everything in here and you throw a piece of that heavy foam on top, um, nothing's going to move around. Um, one other thing to... Keep in mind when you mount your the head for your radio. Sorry. When you mount your head for your radio, you want to make sure that you get it in the right place. Uh, you may have to do some trial and error, get you some small pieces of sticky tape and open and close a few times to make sure you're not hitting anything inside the box. Um, theoretically, you want it to be, when it closes, you want it to be somewhere, you know, in this area right here. You know, give you a little bit of room, not hit any of your switches or anything like that. You know, the voltmeter down there you know so somewhere and i actually it sits up in it so somewhere like right in there is about where you want it to sit and like i said it's a trial and everything you just have to measure and try it and well that's about all i have for today's video as soon as I get my other parts in, I'm going to start. I'll try to do some some shorter clips as we go along. I'm not going to actually uh, film cutting the holes. I, I generally use just a drill and a step bit. Nothing spectacular. And But I will try as I go along, give, give you a look. Uh, take care, 73, N5BSB.